good morning to all today in my session i would like to discuss about a prose entitled happy people by william rolf inch going to the story let me give introduction of this inch all of you refer your textbook page number 25 now coming into the coming to the william rolf inch william rolf inch was a renowned clergy man scholar and social critic he studied and worked in distinct colleges in oxford and cambridge he was a prolific writer and was known for his views on philosophy and christian mysticism his writings were popular and had had an impact in his time some of his ideas remain relevant and are extremely valuable for all generations his craftsmanship in writing is impressive and many of his sayings are used as popular quotations so here clergyman what is the meaning of clergyman over there a person who related to church this inch was a scholar and a social critic He studied and worked in distant colleges in Oxford and Cambridge universities. He was a well-known writer in those days. He is very much well-known for his views on philosophy and Christian mysticism. His writings had an impact in those days. His craftsmanship in writings was were very much impressed and many of his sayings are used as popular quotations coming to the summary of these happy people let me read it out in happy people inch explores the question of what makes people happy and who are considered to be happy people he writes that some consider that ing as a happiest others opinion that old age is when people are happy and content referring to the endless discussion on whether the state of being unmarried or married or whether religion and charity has any bearing on a person's happiness inch makes this famous statement the happiest people seem to be those who have no particular cause for being happy except the fact that they are so his essay suggests that faith in faith and trust in god can enhance one's state of happiness inch explores the question in happy people inch explores the question of what makes people happy few few people say consider that young people are the happiest and others have a opinion that old people are are the happiest so referring to the endless discussion on whether the state of being married or unmarried or whether religion and charity has any bearing on a person's happiness here this inch makes a famous make a famous statement that happiest people seem to be those who have no particular cause for being happy except the fact that they are so he conveys he suggested that one should have faith and trust in god that is going to enhance our state of happiness it enhances our peace so have a faith and trust in our god 
Now, coming into the lesson. Before going into the paragraphs of the of this lesson, let me let us go to the pre-reading questions. Question first question. What, in your opinion, are the things that make one happy? According to your opinion, what things make you happy? If I ask this question to you, you say, Madam, when I watch the movie, I will get happy. Some say that when I reach the highest position in my life, in the society, that makes me happy. And some other people say a comfort life will give happiness. And some other people say that stomach full of food gives happiness. So these are the answers. If someone asks questions, questions to you, what in your opinion are the things that make one happy? So, it differs from person to person. People define, different people define their happiness differently. So, it differs from person to person. Try to introspect yourself and try to ask a question to yourself that what makes you happy? This is the first question. What makes you happy? Next question. Do you know anyone who is always happy or always sad? What is the reason for their contentment or depression? This is the second question. If you find someone, one feels sad. If you find anyone who feels sad, what is the reason for depression? If you find someone who are, who are very happy, then what is the reason for happiness? Do you know that? Do you know that if you, if you have seen someone who are very sad, do you know the reason for that? Or do you know the person who is very happy? And what is the reason for his happiness? So try to introspect yourself. Next question. If you were granted one wish, what would you ask for? So all of the sudden, if God suddenly comes in front of you, what wish do you want to ask God? Really, it's a strange question. This is very tricky questions. They are very tricky questions. So, all of you try to introspect yourself and try to ask a question to yourself that, what makes you happy? These are the pre-reading questions. What makes us happy? And what are the reasons for that happiness? Or what are the reasons for the sadness? Do you say? Or will you question? 
anyone about this about their happiness or about their depression now let's go to our paragraphs this is a introductory paragraph written by inch let me read it out the wise man who wrote the so called proverbs of solomon says the heart knoweth its own bitterness and the stranger don't not intermeddle with its joy we really know very little about the people whom we meet we see their faces which are not much than mask but we cannot read their hearts robert browning thanks god that the meanest of his creature has two soul sides one to face the world with one to show a woman when he loves her it is only the intimacy of family life or in the rare thing perfect friendship that the veil veil is partially drawn aside and even then we don't lay bare our hearts entirely so in the first paragraph in the first line we had come across through the proverbs of solomon says in the, in the first line he mentioned about king solomon and his proverbs who is solomon actually solomon is a is the very wealthy wise king of israel it was mentioned in the old testament of bible and quran you had heard of judgment of solomon where the two mothers come to solomon with a baby so both of them tell that baby belongs to both of them tell that solomon that the baby belong to them so both are mothers to baby but baby can't be a baby for two mothers a baby cannot be a baby to two mothers actually two mothers came to solomon with the baby to to tell the king that the baby belonged to them so both are mothers to baby baby cannot be baby cannot have two mothers so solomon judge so solomon has to judge which one is the real mother of that baby because so what does he decide he ask he ask to cut the baby into two pieces and gave each piece to each of them so that the real mother could not accept and she burst into tears and requested solomon not to cut the baby instead of that give baby to that other lady from this judgment solomon understands who was the real mother so solomon is known for his wise judgment so here in this happy people ing has taken this proverbs of solomon so solomon he was the king of israel he is very wise and worthy he is he was very well known for his judgments 
Next. The heart knoweth. What is that sage over there? The heart knoweth the its own bitterness and a stranger don't intermeddle with its joy. It's our heart that knows our pain. The strangers do not interfere with its joy. Intermeddle. Intermeddle. Its meaning is interference. So only our heart knows our bitterness. Stranger, they don't know. They don't interfere with its joy, with our joy. In our day-to-day -day life, we meet many people and we see their faces. But we don't know really they are sad or happy. We don't know really that they are sad. We see their faces, which are not much more than masks, but we cannot read their hearts. So we see their faces in our day-to-day -day life. We meet so many people and we see their faces. But we don't know really they are sad. All are wearing mask life in order to hide the fact as they look happily. Really we don't know that. Uh, but we can and we cannot read their hearts whether they are happy or sad. Only heart knows it's our bitterness. So, we cannot, by seeing face, we cannot say whether they are happy or sad. Because that is the only heart knows our bitterness. Now, next. Robert Browning. Thanks God that the meanest of his creature has two soul sides. One to face the world with and one to show a woman when he loves her. Here, Browning offers thanks to God that That we have two soul sides that has been given by God to us. One soul side is to face the world, and other soul side is going to be known to our family or our closest relations. Okay, all right, got it. Here, Robert Browning offers thanks to God that we have God given us two soul sides. One soul side to face the world and only our family and our close friends could see the other side of the second soul side. It is only in the intimacy of family life or in, the, in that rare thing, a perfect friendship, our close relations or our close friends could see our second soul side. One soul side to face the world and our close friends, our close relatives, they see, they could see the second soul side. Next, that the veil is partially drawn aside and even then we don't lay bare our hearts entirely. In some occasions, you are not able to act, you are not able to hide your tears. Only in some occasions, what, what are that occasions in our 
occasion with our friends with our close really relations or with our close friends so during the occasion with the with them at that moment you we are not able to act we are not able to hide our tears as they are our close relatives or close friends that they can they could see our second soul side so robert brown offers thanks to god okay is it clear about this first paragraph so in this first paragraph inch explained had given the proverb of solomon who is solomon he is a king of israel he was very well known for his judgment so these are his proverbs sayings and here robert browning here even he was conveying the message of this robert browning in this paragraph as browning offers thanks to god next paragraph who are really the happiest people it is odd that we have no answer ready for with most of us happiness in our beings end and aim we are sometimes in doubt whether our own balance is on the right side or the wrong looking back i think i can separate the years when i was happy and those when i was unhappy but perhaps at the time i should have judged differently we are never either so happy or so miserable as we suppose ourselves to be so he explores the question who are happy he explores the question who are happy really it's a odd question we don't have any ready made answer for that question it's a difficult question we cannot be able to give answer quickly it's not a ready made answer who are really the happiest people this is a question that which we cannot be able to answer quickly sometimes happiness is ultimate destiny of one's life happiness is our beings end and aim so happiness is our final destiny in our life and most of the times staying with our beings gives happiness to us often we doubt whether our own balance is on the right side or on the wrong side looking back i think i can separate the years when i was happy and those when i was unhappy here ing is saying that he can separate that when he was happy and when he was unhappy at the end age at the end age he judged that he was happy going to the movies going to rides with friends roaming with friends that time makes happy but when you become mature when he became mature he would feel that 
he had wasted his time in indulging himself in all these stupid activities. So the judgment judgment may not be correct at that moment, but now, as he was enough matured, he can judge. It's a waste of time. So our judgment is differently at different times. So here, Inge says that he can separate the years when I was happy. So he was saying that when he was young, riding with friends, going to movies, etc. So during that age, he decided, he had given a judgment that those are his happy days. But now, he was enough matured. Now he is enough matured. So now, his judgment is not, now, the, now at present, he judged it as he wasted his time indulging himself in those activities. So, at now, that judgment is, it's not correct. But in the end age, he found that judgment is correct. It's a correct judgment. But right now, it's a wrong judgment. So, but perhaps at the time, I should have judged differently. So, at different times, we had different judgment. We are never either so happy or so miserable as we suppose ourselves to be. Now, so in the second paragraph, Inge explores the question who are happy. So, we don't have any ready-made answer, direct answer to this question. Next, he was saying us that we judge about our happiness differently. So, in the past, we may have different judgment. At present, for the same situation, we could have, we are going to give different judgment. So, it have, it have judged differently. Next paragraph. The successful man generally tells us that he was happiest while he was still struggling for his success or sometimes before he discovered that ambitious career was open to him. As a, ro as a, ro as a rule, the game of life is worth playing but the struggle is the prize. So, coming to the third paragraph, if you ask a question to successful man, the successful man, if you ask a question to the successful man, he tells us that he was happiest while he was still struggling for his success. Never give up. Life is a game. He was saying us, he is saying that the life is a game. So never give up. But the struggle is the price. So this paragraph, through this paragraph, he was asking a question to successful person. Then he tells us that when he was struggling for his success, at that time he felt happy. Sometimes successful man discovered that someone wants to become something in their life. 
what a success, successful man was saying to us that don't give up as the game of life is worth playing what is that life is not a cheap so don't give up life is not a cheap so don't give up the, the struggle is the prize so here the successful person was saying to us life is very valuable so life is a game don't give up struggle struggle until you achieve your goal he felt happy at that time when he was struggling for his success so when he was struggling for success at that time he felt very happy as a life is a game in this life game everyone should do everyone should try to improve themselves and never give up struggle for that next coming to fourth paragraph it is generally supposed that the young are happier than the old this seems to me very doubtful young people are often very unhappy torn by conflicting elements in their characters which after a time come to some kind of mutual understanding robert browning browning boldly claims that old age is the best of life and some old people agree with him so in the fourth paragraph most of the people supposed to say that young one are happier rather than the old people here most of the people supposed to say that young people are happier rather than old people but according to the inch inch was saying according to his concern that young people are not often very happy it is very doubtful they are not happy people as there are number of elements in their character here inch according to inch actually most of the people say that young people are very happier than old people but our inch here the inch was saying that according to his concern he says that young people are often very unhappy they they don't they won't be happy often they are very unhappy because there are number of elements in their characters which after a time come to some kind of mutual understanding when they don't get success or when they don't meet their goals they try to adjust themselves or they try to compromise themselves so after a time come to some kind of mutual understanding so so now they are going to adjust of now they are going to adjust themselves when they do not get success in their life they are going to adjust or compromise themselves ing ones okay according to each concern robert browning here again he was saying the quotations of robert browning that browning boldly claims that old age is the best of life and some old people agree with him so some in the in this paragraph some uh, most of the people were supposed they are saying that young are happy 
rather than old. But Inge had different opinion on that, and he concluded this paragraph that saying that that even the younger people have some unhappiness. But when when they do not get succeed in their life, then they are going to understand. They are going to adjust themselves, and they develop the happiness. Next, coming to next paragraph. The married are supposed to be happier than single. They are certainly less prone to commit suicide. but suicide is not a very good test and it has been pointed out that that married people with no children are not much less suicidally inclined than bachelor and spinsters still as a rule marriage is probably the happiest state it all depends on whether the pair are well matched and very bad choices are i think the exceptions in this paragraph the married are supposed to be happier than single they are certainly less prone to commit suicide what is the meaning of prone naturally to do something but suicide is not very good test and it has been pointed out that married people with no children are much less suicidally inclined than bachelor and spinsters so when you know what a, what is a bachelor who is a bachelor and who is spinster who do not get who did not get marriage bachelor the man who did not get marriage spinster the woman who did not get marriage that is the meaning of that here married people here the paragraph here the inch was saying that married people are happy but until and unless the pair has well matched until and unless the pair are well matched next coming into the next on the whole the happiest people seem to be those who have no particular cause for being happy except the fact that they are so a good reason no doubt and it should not choose a naturally contented temperament as my first request from a fairy good mother godmother it would be unfortunate if i said i wish to be the happiest man in england and promptly found myself locked up in an asylum asylum a cheerful lunatic who believes and promptly found myself locked up in asylum a cheerful lunatic who believed himself to be the emperor of china for all we know to the contrary the happiness the happiness happiest man in england may be a madman and none of us would wish to change places with him and even if the always cheerful person is perfectly sane 
he is without the splendid spur which most men need if they are to do much with their lives so the next next paragraphs tomorrow's class i am going to discuss the uh, these paragraphs happy people it's your second lesson written by inch if you have a textbooks even you go through these paragraphs